Simon, Panda Tenin Kei Kesus Eonas Ton Eonon, Amin. Christos Anesti Ek Nekron, Thanato, Thanaton Pa, Tisas Ke, Tisentis Ni Masi, Zoin Haris Amenos, Christ is risen from the dead, by death trampling down upon death, and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Christos Hanesti Ek Nekron Thanato Thanaton Pa Tisas Ke Tisentis Ni Masi Zoin Harisamen O All the Trinity have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Kirileisum, kirileisum, kirileisum. Glory to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of the power and the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. With the spirit of the righteous made perfect, give rest to the soul of your servant, O Savior. Keep it safe, life of blessedness that is lived with you, O friend of man. 
In the place of your rest, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the soul of your servant. You alone are immortal. Vox apatri, que io, que agio premati, si io te osimono catavasi sadin, que tasso dinas lisas, tan pepe di menon aftos, que tim se quinto do luso, so terra na passon. Now and forever and unto the ages of ages, amen. O Virgin alone, pure and immaculate, that in maiden motherhood brought forth God, intercede with him for the salvation of the soul of your servant. Eleison imasa theos, catata megaleosu, riumathasu apakason keleison, kiria eleison, kiria eleison, Again, we pray for the soul, the servant of God, Panagiotis, who has departed this life, for the forgiveness of his every transgression, voluntary and involuntary. Let the Lord our God establish his soul with a just repose, the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of his sins, let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, Kiri Laison. O God of spirits, every flesh, who trotted down death, overcame the devil, restoring life on this your world, to the soul of your servant, Panigotis, who has departed this life. To yourself, O Lord, give rest in a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of refreshment, where pain, sorrow, and mourning have fled away. Every sin which he committed in thought, word, and deed, you as a good and loving God forgive. Since there is no man who shall live in sin not, you alone are without sin. Your righteous and everlasting righteousness and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, life and repose. For your departed servant, Panagiotis, O Christ our God, that you may give glory, your Father's not beginning, your only good and life creating spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are those way who is blameless, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes, alleluia. My soul is consumed with longing for your judgments at all times, alleluia. My soul melts away from despair, strengthen me with your words, alleluia. Clean on Tinkardian moon, Eastern Materia so Gemis Pleonexion, Alleluia. Indignation seizes me because of sinners who forsake your law, Alleluia. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great love. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Kiria laison, kiria laison, kiria laison. Again, we pray for the soul the departed servant of God, Panigotis, for the forgiveness of all of his transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary. Kiria laison, kiria laison, kiria laison. May the Lord our God establish him where the just repose, the mercy of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of his sins that us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Kiria laison, kiria laison, Kyria laison, O tisia nasasis, isui, makaria napisis, duke kimero dulu su panegioto cristeo teo simon, kisini dog son and a pembleman, sin to an arcus su patri, keto panegio, cagados optio suprema tinin kiai, kesus eonas toneonon, amen. Please be seated. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding, and I will learn your commandments. For I have not forgotten 
and become like a wineskin in the smoke, but I have not forgotten your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am yours, O Lord, save me, for I have sought out your precepts. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have not turned away from your judgments, for you have taught me your law. Eleison me In your mercies incline my heart to forever do your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Now is the time for the Lord to act, for your law has been broken. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Vox apatri que io, que ai o prevmati, que nin que ai, que sus eonas ton eonon amin. Eleison me kirie, and have mercy on me, Ale, Eluvia. Look upon me and have mercy on me, as you do for those who love your name, Ale, Eluvia. I am young and despised, but I have not forgotten your commandments. Alleluia. Hear my voice in your mercy, O Lord. According to your judgments, grant me life. Alleluia. Princes, persecute me without cause, but my heart is rooted in awe of your words, alleluia. Let me live that I might praise you, and your judgments will help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The choir of saints has found the fountain of life and the door of paradise. May I also find the way through repentance. I am the sheep that is lost. O Savior, call me back and save me. Evlogito si kirie didakson metadike o matasu. O paleme. Ek mi ondon plasus me ki corni sutia timisis, para vasi endulis le palin me ap, epis reepsas is ginixis eliftin, isto kato mi osin epanagage, torkenon kalos an armor fosaste. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. I am an image of your nephobo glory. Though I bear the scars of my transgressions, on your creation, Master, take pity and cleanse me by your compassion. Grant me the homeland for which I long, and once again make me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Give rest, O God, to your servant, and place him in paradise where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. To your departed servant give rest, O Lord, and forgive all of his offenses. Vox patri ke io ke ai o pnevmati, do trilam bestis mi osteotitos, esse vos imniso men bohondes, ai o si o patiro anarchos, O sinon arcos ios que theon prevma, foti soni mas pistis sila trevondas, que tu eo niu piros exar pason. Now and forever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. Rejoice, gracious lady, who for the salvation of all gave birth to God in the flesh, and through whom the human race has found salvation. Through you, pure and blessed Theotokos, may we find paradise. Alleluia, 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 doxa si o theos, 
Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 Vox Asi, O Theo, O Please rise. With all the saints, give rest, O Christ, to the souls of your What pleasure in life is unmixed with sorrow? What glory has stood firm and unchanged upon the earth? All things are weaker than shadow and more elusive than dreams. In only a moment death prevails over all, but in the light of your face and the sweetness of your beauty, O Christ, grant rest to the one whom you have chosen, the lover of mankind. Like a blossom that withers away, like a dream that passes and is gone, so is everyone resolved into dust. When the trumpet sounds, the dead as in an earthquake will rise and go forth to meet you, O Christ our God. Then, O Master, grant a place in the tents of your saints to the soul of your servant Panayotis, whom you have withdrawn from us, O Christ. Alas, what an agony the soul endures when it separates from the body. How she weeps then, and there are none to show her mercy. To the angels she turns with downcast eyes, her supplications useless. To men she extends her hands, but no one can help her. Therefore, my beloved brethren, let us ponder how brief our life is. Let us ask Christ to grant rest to him who has now gone before us and his great mercy on our souls. Vanity are all the quests of humanity. After death, they no longer exist. Our wealth does not endure. Our glory cannot go with us. For when death comes, all this vanishes. Therefore we cry out to Christ, our mortal King. Grant rest to your servant Panagioti, who has departed from us, for a home is prepared for all whom you have gladdened. Truly frightening is the mystery of death when the soul and the body part, their harmony broken, and the bond of nature which made them one is sundered by the will of God. Therefore, we beg you, grant rest to the one who has gone before us in the tent of your righteous, O life-giving lover of mankind. Where is our attachment to the world? Where are now our transient fantasies? Where is our gold and silver? Where are the multitude of servants and anxieties? All is dust, all is ashes, all is shadow. But come, let us cry out to our mortal King, Lord. Deem him worthy of your eternal good things and grant rest in eternal blessedness to the one who has gone before us. I remember the prophet who cried, I am dust and ashes, and once in the graves and saw bones laid bare and said, which one was a king? Which a soldier? Who was rich or poor? Righteous or a sinner? Lord, I grant rest to your servant, the righteous lover of mankind. You are the source of my being person given form by your command. You will defend 
strengthen me as a living being by bringing together visible and invisible natures. For you form my body out of the earth, you gave me a soul by your divine and life giving birth. Therefore, Christ, grant rest to your servant, Pandi Gotis, in the land of the living and the tents of the righteous. Rest, O life giving Savior, to our brother, whom you have withdrawn from this transit world, as he Christ glory to you. From the beginning, you created the human race in your image and likeness, placing us in paradise, and having eaten the forbidden fruit, we became transgressors of your commandments. For this reason, Lord, you sent us to return to the earth in which we were taken to ask for rest. I weep and lament when I think about death, and behold our beauty, fashioned in the image of God, lying in the grave disfigured, with a glory and a cry of expression. Oh, what a wonder! What is this mystery concerning us? How were we given over to decay and subjected to death? Indeed, as it is written by the command of God, who grants rest to the departed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The path which you adored, O Lord, has brought us in mortality. If you had not been laid in a tomb, then paradise would not have been opened. Wherefore, grant rest to the one departed, O lover of mankind, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O chaste virgin, the entrance of the word, and mother of our God, pray that his soul be granted mercy. Blessed is the way in which you walk today for a place of rest has been prepared for you. Maka ye are ye for those ye for every seamer all o titi masti si toposana pavseos Blessed is the way in which you walk today for a place of rest has been prepared for you. Ooh. To our Lord have I cried, my God. The reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Brethren, we could not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. As we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with it those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise. Wisdom, let us attend, that we may hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto you all. The reading is from the Gospel according to John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to the hour is coming and now is, 
when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Eleison imas a teos, catata megaleosu, liomatasu pacason keleison, iria laison, iria laison, iria laison. Again, we pray for the soul and the repose of the servant of God, Panigotis, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of his every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. May the Lord our God establish his soul with a just repose. The mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of his sins, let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To Kyrie the eighth omen, Kyrie eleison. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and conquered the devil, give life to your world. Grant rest to the soul of your departed servant, Panigotis, Peter, in a place of light, in a place of happiness, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. O gracious and merciful God, forgive every sin which he committed in thought, word, or deed. There is no one who lives and does not sin. You alone are without sin. Your righteous and everlasting righteousness in your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, life repose. Your departed servant, Panayotis, O Christ, our God, in whom we give glory to your fathers our beginning, your only good and night giving spirit, now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ, our God, and hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, arose from the dead, as our mortal King has authority over the living and the dead. Have mercy on us and save us, through the intercession of a spotless, pure, and holy Mother, of the holy, glorious, and all praise of the apostles of the God-bearing fathers, of the holy, glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and just friend, Lazarus, and lay the grave four days, and of all the saints. Establish the soul of his servant, Peter, Panagiotis, to depart from us at the tents of the righteous. Give rest him in the bosom of Abraham and of him among the saints, and have mercy on us as a good God who loves mankind. May you remember eternal, dear brothers, worthy of blessings and eternal memory. Please be 
seated. Panagiotis <clears throat> Peter Asimakopoulos was born in Greece on August 1st, 1942. He is survived by his loving wife, Daspina Asimakopoulos, which they've been married for almost 50 years. He is survived by his son, Spiro Asimakopoulos, daughter, Stacy Parnell, son-in-law, Ryan Parnell, as well as his two beautiful granddaughters, Evangelina, Evangelina, and Ariana Parnell. Peter was strong, hard-working man. He was a kind and simple man who loved and cared about his family very much. He moved to the United States over 50 years ago and began working in construction. For the past 31 years, he has been a successful restaurant owner, which he leaves to his children and his family. May his memory be eternal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. There's a setting at a family dinner where there's a little girl who is just not hungry. She's sitting at the dinner table, and she hasn't eaten any food, her mother had made meatloaf with mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans. I'm not sure if you've ever had a dinner like that before. But the little girl had taken her green beans and she had put them in her gravy and she was poking them around like little boats with her fork. But she hasn't eaten anything. And her father says, sweetie, you need to eat, eat your dinner. But she's very sad, having lost her papu. And so her father says, honey, please eat. And then her mother says, sweetie, you can't grow up and become big and strong if you don't eat your dinner. And then she replies, why do I need to grow up, become big and strong, if I'm going to die just like papu? Death is a terrible thing. I don't need to tell you that because I know that when we lose someone that we really care about, someone so close to us, it is so painful and it hurts. And there is a sense of grief, but even more than that, it's like a despair. You know what despair is? Where you feel hopeless. I'm never going to see that person again. And that's what really hurts, right? It's that, that feeling you'll never see them again, and it's over. It's gone. It's done. Everything is gone, okay? But I have to tell you that there is hope. There is definite hope. What is hope? Hope is something that is for sure going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Something absolute. So unfortunately, here in the United States, we think of hope as something that we want to happen, but it's not really going to happen, you know? And I use this example a lot, because I like the example. When my son, my oldest son, turned 16, at his 16th birthday, he was hoping a brand new red Mustang would be parked in the driveway. He actually was hoping that, but he knew it wasn't going to happen. Actually, what I should have bought him was a matchbox 
red Mustang, brand new, and put it in the, in the driveway, right? Then he could have had his dream realized. No, not really. <laughs> but it's something that he could have kept on his desk for the rest of his life. But this is what we think of. Hope, hope is something we want, but it's not going to happen. This isn't true when it comes to God. Not true. In fact, the Bible, the word hope, is an absolute promise. Absolute. So what is our hope then? What is our hope? Well, first of all, we have to understand that God knows our pain. He knows how much we are suffering when we lose someone in death. And he also knows how it is, it is easy for all of us to lose hope and despair when we think the fact that we're going to die, so what's the point? What's the point? Like the little girl is pushing around her boats. What's the point? The point is, is that Jesus Christ is life, and he is a person, and he is real. Because God so much understood our pain that he said, I'm going to become a human being and be one of them so that I can take on myself all their suffering and all their pain and that I will rise from the dead after I've been crucified. Death will not hold me Death is not the end of the story for me, and because of me, it will not be the end of the story for anybody else. So, when we believe in Jesus, we have life in him. Okay, people say, well, Father Fotios, that sounds like, that sounds like wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be nice if we would rise after we die with Christ and that we would see our papu again, that this isn't the end, we're actually going to be together again, but that's wishful thinking. No, it's not. Well, what's the proof then? Can you have any proof about that? Yes, we have tons of proof. Do you know that? We have a lot of proof. Huh? What do you mean? Well, first of all, the biggest proof that Jesus has risen from the dead is that he's alive and that he lives, and he lives in all of us. But there are other proofs. Do you know in our church, we have what we call saints, right? Saints. What is a saint? A saint is someone who really loved God with all their heart, and they followed him. And God transformed their lives and as we grow in our love with God, as we really try to do God's will, and the way that, you know, you girls could look at it is that you really try to listen to mom and dad. You know, sometimes you don't want to listen. Your mom says, okay, it's time to clean your room. <sighs> do I have to? I don't want to. Or she says, do you, guys, do you girls play video games? No? Do you watch TV? How about if she says, turn off the TV? Uh, I don't want to. I'm not done watching. Mom says, no, please turn it off. Okay, you know, what, you know when a, how a saint responds? Is this when God asks a saint to do something, he says, okay, do this. They just say, okay. Amazing thing is that you girls can become saints just by listening to your mom and dad because that pleases God. But what happens as we are following him, a change takes place within us. Okay? An invisible change. But it's true. And this change we see in our saints, especially alter their life, but we see something else when they die too. Okay? Because saints, they perform miracles while they're alive, but they perform a lot of miracles after they die. But there's two things that we notice, physical things. Okay? So think about this. One is common, one's less common. So when a saint dies, their body will decompose back into the ground, generally, but their bones will not. Their bones never become like white, brittle, dead bones. They're kind of yellow and brown, and they smell like fragrance. They don't stink. They have a fragrance to them, and they perform miracles, okay? So that's one proof. But there are other proofs. We have some saints who, for God, 
Only God, reasons that God knows, but he doesn't allow their bodies to decompose and they die. And such a saint we have in San Francisco, California. You don't have to go to Greece or Russia or the Ukraine. I've actually been in a monastery in the Ukraine, the Kiev K's monastery, where there's over 120 incorrupt saints. But you don't have to go there. We can go to San Francisco. And there St. John is lying in this glass case, completely there. He died in 1966. People could say, okay, well, they embalmed him. That's why he hasn't decomposed. Well, they can say that, but that doesn't explain the continual miracles that take place through the prayers of St. John. So why am I telling you all this? So you have hope, real hope that you know this isn't the end, that Papu is actually alive. You know what happens when we die? Our soul, which is really who we are, comes out of our body. Boop. And we're like, whoa, I'm not in my body anymore. That's what happens. We die. Our soul is alive. That's really who we are. Body is just a shell, right? But our soul is who we are. And then... In the resurrection, we're going to get a new body. So, I know it's sad, really sad, to lose someone, okay? To lose your papu, to lose your husband, to lose your dad, to lose your friend. But we have to know he's alive. We also have to know that through prayer, we can communicate with him, okay? I've told this story before, but I want you to hear this. There's three boys who went to Mount Athos, and they were at a monastery. So this is a monastery in Greece, okay? And they come into this room, and they're waiting to, to get a sign to where they're going to stay. And a Greek Orthodox monk comes walking in, you know, with a big long beard, and he's all covered up in black. And he says to them, not in Greek, he says in English, through prayer. That's, those were his words, through prayer. And the three guys look at him, they were from the United States, like, Father, you speak English? And he says, of course. Oh, can we talk with you? He said, sure. So he sits down, they start talking. And as they're talking, one of the three guys says, Father, why, when you walked in here, did you say through prayer? And the guy's friend one of the remaining two said, you know what, I think I know the answer to that. Because just before Father Yakovos walked in, I was thinking about my dad. And my dad and I had always planned to go to visit Mount Athos. And my father had died and we could never do the trip together. And I was wondering how I could ever share with him these experiences of being on Mount Athos. And then Father Yakovos comes walking in and says through prayer. It was like the answer to my thoughts. And Father Yakovo says, yes, that's correct. Whoa. And then one of the three guys asks him, he says, Father, can I ask you a personal question? He says, sure, ask me anything. How old are you? It's hard to tell the age of a Greek Orthodox monk with their beard and their clothes and so forth. So Father Yakovos was actually from the United States, from Pittsburgh, and he said, well, like a very fun American, he said, well, guess. See if you can guess my age. So the three of them start trying to guess his age. 40, 38, you know, all these numbers start coming out. And then one of the three goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said you came here when you were 24, and you said you've been here eight years. And Father Yakova says, that's right. So that means you're 32. That's correct. Wait a minute. The other two said, wait a minute. He never said he'd been here eight years. He never said he came here when he was 24. And the one who heard it said, of course he said it. I heard it. You guys weren't paying attention. And the other two said, are you kidding me? We've been hanging on every word that he's ever said. He never said it. So the argument went back of whether Father Yakovos said it or he didn't say it. So they asked him, Father, did you say it? Yes or no? He said, to be honest, I did not say it with my lips, but I said it with my heart. My heart. 
So what does that mean? It means that we can communicate without saying a word. How is that? Because of God. Because of God. And because Jesus is alive. This is the most important thing. This is why we celebrate Jesus' resurrection with this beautiful hymn, Christ is risen from the dead, because it's true, because we have to hold on to it, because we cannot forget it. And even though we can be so sad about losing our papu, we have to know, but we're going to see him again. It's like he's gone to Greece, and he said, I'm going to Greece, and I'll see you when you come. It's exactly what it's like. So he's gone to be with God, and he's waiting for us. This is true. And this is what we hold on to. But I know it's hard in the meantime. And so this is why we have to hold on to Christ, because Christ can comfort us in ways which we cannot even begin to understand. He can comfort us in ways, and so can the Virgin Mary, Panagia. All we have to do is say, Lord, have mercy on me, help me. Have mercy on me. Get me through this day. Give me hope. He can put this peace in our hearts. This is why Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Isn't interesting, isn't it interesting that we begin the divine liturgy with three petitions from the priest or the deacon. In peace let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls and for the peace of the whole world. Jesus is peace. And what is peace? Ah. And that's what we need. But we can only really get that in Christ. So this is why at funerals we always say, so we samas, life to us. What does that really mean? It means Jesus Christ to us. We hold on to Christ, then we have everything, everything that we need. So, there's a very simple prayer, which if you haven't heard it before, I'm just going to remind you, for those who have heard it, for those who haven't, and it is, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Very simple. You can say that while you're riding your bike, while you're watching TV, while you're in the car, while you're doing dishes, while you're unloading the dishwasher. Do you ever have to do that? You can say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And the most beautiful thing about that prayer is that whenever we say the words Jesus Christ, you cannot separate Jesus' presence from his name. He's always present when we say that. This is our, our, our struggle, is that we're like, God, where is, where is God? Where is he? No, he's right here. And when we say the words, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, he's present. I wish all of you his peace to comfort you in the days, weeks, months, years ahead. But we have to hold on to, to Christ. We have to make time for him in our lives because he's all we have, really. He's all we have. May our Lord grant Panagioti Papu eternal life with all the saints. Amen. God bless you all. Life, life to us. Amen. We're going to close the casket now and then to move Peter down here so we can come forward and, and say our last goodbyes to him. And then we're going to anoint him and then we will proceed to, to take him to the funeral coach. Well, then we will proceed to the cemetery. Would you rather? I mean, it's just the steps, right? It's just, yeah, we'll bring him down and turn him sideways, make it easier. Yeah, yeah. We'll close it initially to bring him down, and then we'll open it back up. Yeah, unfortunately, our steps here are not conducive to going up and down. I wished, you know, when they made the church, that they just put one step and went all the way back like that, and then had two more steps into the altar, or three more. One day, if I get my wish, we will change that and make it much easier to come up onto the Salaya. Okay.
Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, and let them that hate him flee from before his face. A sacred Pascha has been shown forth to us today, a new and holy Pascha, a mystic Pascha, an all venerable Pascha, a Pascha that is Christ the Redeemer, a spotless Pascha, a great Pascha, a Pascha of the faithful, a Pascha that has opened unto us the gates of paradise, a Pascha that does hollow all the faithful. As smoke vanishes, so let them vanish, as wax melts before the fire. Come from that scene, O women, bearers of good tidings, and say to Sion, receive from us the tidings of joy of the resurrection of Christ. Exult, dance, and be glad, O Jerusalem, for you have seen Christ the King as a bridegroom come forth from the tomb. So let sinners perish at the presence of God, and let the righteous be glad. The myrrh-bearing woman at deep dawn drew nigh to the tomb of the giver of life. They found an angel sitting upon the stone, and he addressing them in this manner did say, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you mourn the incorruptible amid corruption? Go proclaim it unto his disciples. This is a day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. A Pascha of delight, Pascha, the Lord's Pascha, and our all venerable Pascha is done for us a Pascha, whereon let us embrace one another with joy. O Pascha, ransom from sorrow, Today Christ has shone forth from the tomb as from a bridal chamber and has filled the women with joy, saying, Proclaim it unto the apostles. Do you want to come forward before I anoint him? We close the casket. 